going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So we have a lot to talk about today. We have to talk about the overall markets, the performance of the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. We also have to talk about what I did in terms of my trades as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And Tesla has been on my mind as well guys and that's kind of the main stock I want to focus on in this video as you read in the title of this video. So before we do get into everything that is going to be talked about in this video, all I ask from you is if you want to support the channel, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me. And don't forget, if you want to be a further part of our community, Strive Smart Discord group chat and the Strive Smart Facebook group is linked down below as well as the Strive Smart merch. So let's get right into it, starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. So with about 15 minutes left um, in the market today on Friday, there wasn't much crazy movement um, in terms of the overall markets, right? The S&P here right now is up about $4.28. Nothing crazy, a move of about 0.14% to the upside. But the really good thing that I'm seeing here, as you guys guys can see based on this hourly chart is we did confirm a higher low on top of that 50 simple moving average which is this green line that you're seeing this is a very very good sign for the bulls out there that the uptrend is continuing and that we are in the process in route to making a higher high and potentially an all-time high in the S&P 500. And I think if this holds, obviously, guys, we'll be going up again to an all-time high and into that 3,100 territory, which is absolutely insane for the S&P 500. And just to see a closer basis here of what ended up happening today, let's take a look on the five-day, five-minute. And another attractive thing that I saw was that we held 3085, a previous all time high as a support today. Actually, just a couple of uh, minutes ago, this was probably eh, more close to an hour ago, we held that for the second time and we broke out. That's a very, very good sign for the bulls here. Very, very strong close here in the market. If we do end up closing on this ups upswing, which at this point I think we will, very, very strong sign heading into the weekend. And for the bulls, um, honestly, to continue to push this market up um, in this next coming week of trading. So overall, you know, that's kind of the time frames I wanted to focus on. On the four hour, we can just pretty much see that we're at all time highs. Um, you know, if we zoom in a bit, we pull down and we held that same level we talked about. So it's kind of the same story on the four hour chart. And to transition to the Dow Jones, guys, this one's actually down a little bit right now, but pretty much still flat, right? Because it's down seven points. And with with how massive in terms of a dollar value the Dow Jones is, a $7 move down is really nothing, right? You can see that equates um, to about 0.03% here, as you can see. And if we actually go to the one hour chart, you can also see just like the S&P, the Dow Jones is holding that 50 SMA, again, this green line as a support at a higher low with a very strong close here heading into the close of the market into the weekend, which I think is very good, very, very good for the bulls for the next trading session, which is on Monday. So another thing to, uh, to keep an eye on here on the daily chart is this triple bottom that we got at about 27.6, which is an old resistance at, uh, you know, acting as a new support now and the breakout on, you know, out of that uh, triple bottom is a very bullish sign. Like I said, you know, a couple of seconds ago, and like I said on the S&P, you know, as we're seeing a very, very similar pattern on the S&P, it's more of a double bottom breakout. But nonetheless, they're both breaking out in terms of their daily charts. So on the NQ right here, guys, up 20 points right now, up 0.23%. This one's doing the best in terms of the three major indexes that I track on this channel. And on the daily chart, you can see it's 
kind of been uptrending all day, right? Higher highs, higher lows for the, you know, pretty much the whole day. And here in the past hour, we've seen that very, very nice pop, um, very, very nice close for the bulls, like I said, on the S&P and the Dow. And this is just looking very bullish in my eyes, right? If we're going to the hourly chart here, you know, we held the 50 SMA. We didn't really pop to an all-time high um, quite yet, like we did yesterday, I believe, or the day before. But again, if this pattern holds, you know, if the bulls take control heading into next week, this should have no problem um, doing something like this, as I'm showing you all with these trend lines, which would just be a nice pop to another all-time high, a fresh all-time high here on the NASDAQ. So pretty much on these markets, guys, they're all pushing the highs at this point. On the hourly charts, they're all showing a beautiful uptrend, riding those moving averages. And until we break those moving averages to the downside, this is market is going to continue running up. This market is in an uptrend, right? And, and to the downside, I mean, if we were to sell off aggressively like this in terms of the S&P, maybe back down to the low 3000s, then I'd be like, okay, this is a more sizable correction. We may be pulling down for maybe a week or two at this point. But until we get that, I think it's going to be smooth sailing to the upside, like I've been saying here over the past couple um, of weeks, honestly, on the channel. So overall, that's kind of my uh, opinion on the market. Very quick little market update of what happened today and honestly over the past couple of days. So what I want you guys to do now is go down below in the comments and let me know your thoughts as to what you know what's this market going to do are you buying stocks selling stocks are you mostly in cash let me know your opinion so what I personally did today guys in the market it was a slow day for me today I'll be completely honest again we saw the market was kind of slow in general what I focused on though was at the ticker symbol ATVI I got a quick in and out day trade on it not too crazy crazy of a trade, but let me explain to you guys what I did. So on the one day, one minute, well, before we actually get into that, first of all, they reported earnings yesterday, and if you watched my video yesterday, you got my live reaction um, of their earnings in terms of the initial price action of their earnings, and their earnings in general, I'm trying to pick it up here on my phone, um, they did quite well. They put up uh, numbers, I believe it was like $0.32 cents EPS versus $0.20 cents EPS, I could be completely wrong, but they beat on EPS and revenue by a nice margin, but the guidance was wasn't great. Like I've been mentioning, their guidance needs to be improved for this stock to really see a massive pump up. But it seems like, you know, we saw the initial sell off and we started to consolidate at about 52, 53 bucks, despite the guidance not being um, the best, right? We started to find a support at around again, that $53 level. We kind of bottomed there, um, you know, after the earnings report, we saw another bottom there at about 520 PM after hours hours Eastern Standard Time, right? Another bottom there about an hour later. And this morning at 8.30 a.m., one hour before the market opens here on the East Coast, yet again, another bottom, another bottom, right? And then we sold off to about 52.70 when the market opened. And then ultimately, we started to reverse out of this downtrend that we've been on over the past, um, I guess you can say 48, eh, more like 24 to 36 hours, right? The whole day yesterday, we downtrended um, 50 S SMA acting as a resistance. You know, we got that bearish cross 50 SMA below the 180 SMA. Again, we got the consolidation after hours yesterday, pre-market today. And then when we started to pop and break out, that was a, a sign for me to potentially get in and that it was a temporary bottom for at the being that $53 level. So that's kind of what I did. But if we're looking on a percentage basis, you know, I got in, I believe, um, not on the initial break. I wanted to see it hold the uh, uh, SMAs as a support. We got that. We got another pop. And then I ended up getting in on this dip. I think it was like uh, maybe a little bit higher. I think it was like 53.83 is where I ended up getting in. Then I didn't sell off here like an idiot, right? You know, I, I didn't I didn't sell off where I should have, where I, I would have made about 1.5%, but I actually sold off um, as we started to sell off and make this little downtrend pattern here of a lower highs, uh, the lower highs we're seeing. I sold off, I believe, at this high at about 54.6, which either way, guys, you know, that was a pretty decent 
decent move of, I think it was like point, um, no, no, it was more than that. It was like 1.2% profit versus the 1.6 I could have made if I sold here, but I got a little greedy. I'll be honest. I was like, okay, in my head at this point, I was thinking, Earnings were good, but the guidance wasn't great, and it seems like the stock investors want this to, to push up here. There's some buying power um, pushing the stock up, so I figured this could fill the gap up to 56 bucks. but obviously we never ended up getting there, so I just decided to take the profit, quick little profit after that, um, when it really didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. Um, but either way, I took a profit, guys, a nice profit profit of about 1.2% um, on ATV, and that's pretty much all I did, right? Some swings I'm in that I'm still holding, um, Facebook and McDonald's, don't really want to get too deep into those because this video will be too long, but yep, I'm still holding those, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not down very substantially on Facebook, I'm down a little bit on it, I think my average is around 192, um, you can see the stock's price is at about 190 bucks right now, so I'm still holding on to those um, through the weekend, and McDonald's, I believe I'm kind of uh, break even right now and I feel comfortable holding through these uh, uh, through the weekend as well on McDonald's. So what did we talk about? in terms of um, um, Tesla stock the last time I made a Tesla stock video, which was about two weeks ago. We talked about how, um, not two weeks ago, maybe like one week ago, we talked about how this positive earnings report, and for those of you guys that don't know what happened, in terms of that earnings report, let me read to you guys what happened very, very quickly. They reported an EPS of $1.86 versus the loss of $0.42 cents that was expected. So that is what propelled the stock like crazy when I recorded that last video, which was that earnings report, right? We can see here it went from 255, guys, realize this, 255 to 307. That's a move of 52 points in the matter of literally 24 hours, less than 24 hours. That is crazy. The revenue came in at 6.3 billion versus the 6.33 expected. So they missed slightly on revenue, guys, but with the surprise profit with that EPS, you know, blowing the estimates out of the water, investors didn't care about the revenue. That alone, the EPS, is what shot the stock up like crazy. A couple of other notable things that are coming in the very near future, China Gigafactory, right? This is coming very, very soon. Production over in China is going to be crazy, right? So in investors are anticipating that, and that is another reason why I think, you know, the stock has been continuing continuously moving up even after the initial reaction of their earnings um, in, in this first couple of days, in these first couple of days, as we can see, um, you know, here on the chart, right? We had a couple of days of hype, one big pop to 307, another big pop to 340. We kind of cooled off a bit. And since then, the stock has continued riding up, hitting a higher high, which was yesterday and closing in five minutes here. It's going to close on a very bullish note in my personal opinion, right? So we have the Gigafactory coming, Model Y, and a pickup truck is what Tesla has been talking about here. So a lot of these moving variables are exciting for investors, exciting for traders, of course, as well. And I think they've been pushing the stock up ever since that earnings report. And obviously that earnings report, in my opinion, is still pushing the stock up as well. So let's break it down here. Technicals, then we'll take a look at some longer term technicals to see if this thing can get over 350 like I said in the title. So first let's zoom in here on this three year one week chart to get some levels that Tesla stock has been at in the past. And for those of you guys that have been following Tesla you know that it got up to about 390 that is the all time high here. So this is going to be the first resistance that we're going to draw out. The next one is going to be around 300 I guess you can say 60 bucks because we topped off there in the beginning of 2018 in kind of the middle of 2018 on June in June of 2018 here at 360 again a couple of months later and again towards the end of 2018 before Tesla stock crashed through the floor so at this point you can say with confidence 360 is a very strong level of resistance and it might be one of the next resistances we're going to face here 
if we break above that $350 level. And why am I saying Tesla stock above $350? Because take a look at this. Let me try to find the right time frame here um, so we can get... Actually, I think it's going to be the one year that's going to show us this perfect. So the fact that we broke above 320 which was a resistance from back in the February month of 2019, that's a very bullish sign, and that's a, and that's a good sign that we're pushing back up to 350 which is that next level of resistance. So let me talk to you guys about this. If we break above 350 on a technical basis, this thing can definitely go back up to that major 360 level that we saw on the three-year, one-week chart. That's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen here. Um, but until we get there, guys, you know, we might pop up to 350 first. This is going to happen in my personal opinion. Let me hear me out here, guys. I think we can get the 350 first, maybe next week, even with the bullish close that we're about to see here in a minute. And the bullish close is if we look on the five day, five minute, the fact that we held strong at 335 for pretty much the entire day and that we're breaking above moving averages being the 50 and the 180 SMA here on the five day, five minute, looking to propel us up to that 340 level. And ultimately, if we break that 340 level, that's where we're going to go up and test that 350 level. And when we get to that 350 level, if we get to that 350 level, that is where I think we'll see a slight retracement in the stock. We'll see it cool off a bit because at that point, it'll be extremely overbought on the RSI. And from there, we might see a pull down and a retest on what level, guys? Yes, you heard it right. 340 bucks. We might at that point be on the 50 SM may as well as it catches up here if the stock pushes up right so 350 the uh, SMA might be up here at that point we get the 350 pull down hold 340 right and ultimately next pop up after that if that happens we'll break above 350 and then to that magical 360 level that we talked about a couple of minutes ago so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now on Tesla and of course from there guys um, anything above 360 we may be going up to test that 390 all-time high um, that we talked about. And there goes the market, guys. S&P closed up 630. Dow down about 770. NASDAQ up about 28 points at the close. So that's kind of my thoughts on Tesla. Let me know down below what are your thoughts on Tesla. I'd love to know. Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think the, there, um, there will be another short squeeze that will definitely get us to 360? Let me know down below in the comment section. So very quickly, some other stuff stocks and ETFs that I want to talk about in this video, one of them being Disney. And last time I checked before the, uh, filming this video, they were looking pretty bullish heading into the close. And I guess you can say they are still looking bullish. It seems like they found a bottom at about 137. Um, we broke above that 50 SMA. We failed to break above the 180 SMA, but that's okay. Um, because at this point, guys, we kind of held the 50 SMA heading into the close, and it seems like we are starting to push up here. So this is going to be, in my opinion, a nice swing entry opening into Monday if it holds this level into the market open. Let's say Disney opens at 138, 138.50 with the margin of profit that we're seeing here up to about 142 based on today's action. You know, at 138.50, let's say, for example, we get in up to 142. That could be a nice, maybe a day trade, two, three day swing trade of about two to 3% profit. Even more than that, if the stock actually breaks up above 141.84 and into to, let's say the 142s, 143s, and so on, right? And what caused this massive pop on Disney, guys? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's their earnings, right? Yesterday, they blew it out of the water. Um, I think they did beat on both EPS and Rev. Let me just see, um, you know, what did they do yesterday? We'll be able to see it here. Either way, they did very, very amazing, um, amazingly on earnings. No, they missed on revenue. That's right. They missed on revenue, but they crushed on EPS. That's right. $1.07 EPS versus $0.95 cents EPS, 19.1 um, billion revenue versus 19.19 billion. So, they, you know, it seems like the stock doesn't really care about the revenue miss. The EPS beat was incredible, and it seems like overall we got hit at that 142.50 level of resistance where we got hit back in April of 2019 
and really all across the June into the July months of 2019 as well. Um, we were getting rejected at that point. So I think if we break above 142 here, um, next stop's going to be 144.60. And of course, after that, 147, which is that all-time high. So Disney, that's kind of my thoughts on that one. Um, Procter & Gamble is another one that I want to talk about in this video very, very quickly. We can see this is um, a stock that's kind of in a weird spot right now. It's in this horizontal pattern um, between 125 and I guess you can say around 119, 120. And really, I'm not looking to trade this one until I let it wiggle out a bit, a bit more, right? We can see it's holding 120 kind of right here, but I can still see this thing dropping based on what it's looking like. It's not like it's looking like it wants to fill up to the 120s, mid 120s at this point. It seems like it still wants to drop down. Maybe if it drops down to 116, we find support there. That could be a nice entry point. Um, but until it wiggles out, guys, you know, I'm not looking to trade this. Um, but ideally, maybe 116. But honestly, the ideal situation would be if we pull up or push up here, um, you know, into the 121s, maybe 121.50, then enter in on a nice swing trade up to the resistance at about 125. That's kind of what I'm thinking on uh, PG right here. Another stock is Chipotle Mexican Grill, guys. This one's been squashed down from 860 all the way to about $728 at this low, um, you know, 731 at the close of the market today. Day. And overall, that's a 15, 16% drop. And if we're just judging off technicals here, um, a major support's coming up at about 715 bucks. And let me tell you guys, if we get to that level, you know, this is a spot where if Chipotle doesn't hold this level, which I personally think it will, um, I'm looking to enter a swing at this point if we bottom out here. But let's say if it doesn't hold this level, there's a lot of gap down from here. We could be going down to uh, you know, 670. I'm looking at 670, uh, you know, as a pretty serious level of support here. Um, you know, even below that, which would be worst case scenario, 640. And actually, not the worst case, th that's probably the second worst case scenario. The absolute worst case scenario is if we get all the way down to the 600 level, which honestly, guys, I doubt that's going to happen. That's another 130 points. At that point, I'd be considering Chipotle as a long-term investment and not even a swing trade, right? Probably both, a swing trade and a long-term investment. At this point, I'm looking at it more as a swing trade as the valuation for a long-term investment is too expensive uh, for me still. I'd rather buy McDonald's at these levels long-term than Chipotle. But again, if we get down here, probably be buying Chipotle um, in my long-term portfolio because that that's going to be pretty attractive um, down there. So to end off the video, you guys, guys, you guys didn't really do much at all today. Today was one of those days where it was just chilling um, for the whole day. And that's understandable because you guys and natural gas have been on fire recently. So at this point, I think they're in a cool off phase. Um, you can see it here. We, we went through it a couple of days ago, really for one day um, before we spiked up to the next high. But here it's been about one, two, three days of cooling off. So the moment of truth is going to be on Monday, Tuesday of next week. You know, over this weekend, are we going to hold this 180 SMA on the uh, hourly chart? You know, if we hold that that level pop up this thing could be gapping up to the 20 level 21 and if we look at the long-term chart not really a long-term chart but the four-hour chart we can see next level would be about 23 bucks so take a look at that you know heading into this weekend what's natural gas going to do like i've been mentioning on this channel um i think once demand starts kicking in we start to get withdrawals of natural gas that's going to pop up the price here in the next couple of weeks so if i were to put my money guys um on anything in terms of natural gas and you gas right here, I'm still going long. If I were forced to buy either you gas or D gas, I'm definitely more on the you gas side at this point um, because we got a less than expected injection yesterday in terms of um, the inventory report. So once it starts with withdrawing, guys, this thing is going to squeeze up, in my opinion, and that's kind of just what I'm patiently waiting for um, at this point. That's what I think, and again, I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below. So, 
That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group and pick up some Strive Smart merch. All of those are linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.